السلام ورحمة الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده ما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى this evening we will continue in our series of lessons in the book شمائل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم or the characteristics of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by Al-Imam uh, Abu Isa al-Tirmidhi rahimullah. Uh, this evening we have reached to chapter number 26 where Al-Imam al-Tirmidhi rahimullah he says, Bab ma jaa fi sifati idami rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Says the chapter of what has been reported about the description of the idam of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, uh, the idam is uh, that thing that is eaten along with bread. And so, for example, uh, sometimes we have a piece of bread and we'll have uh, sauce, we'll make a sauce in order to, uh, you know, to, to eat the bread with. Or uh, we may, uh, you know, maybe we'll cut up something, some fruit uh, <clears throat> or vegetable, and we'll cut it up into small pieces, and we'll eat that along with, uh, with the bread. Maybe we'll dip the bread in it, or maybe we'll spread it on the bread. Uh, different cultures, uh, you know, they do things a little bit differently, but it's called the idam. And so, Al-Imam Al-Tirmidhi, rahimahullah, is uh, he's in this chapter? He's going to bring many uh, hadith uh, about that which has been reported from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam about that which he used to eat his bread with. In the previous chapters, we discussed the bread of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Now we're going to discuss what did the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to eat along uh, with his bread. So the first hadith that an Imam al Tirmidhi rahimahullah he brings uh, in this chapter he says we were informed or we were told by Muhammad ibn ibn Sahil ibn Askar <coughs> as well as Abdullah ibn Abdul Rahman they both said we were told by Yahya ibn Hassan who said that we were told by Sulaiman ibn Bilal on the authority of Hisham ibn Urwa on the authority of his father on the authority of Aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala anha أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال نعم الإدام الخل قال عبد الله ابن عبد الرحمن في حديثه نعم الإدام أو الأدن الخل. So Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها she said that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said what a great what a great إدام is the vinegar the vinegar is a great uh, something great that you would eat along with your bread. Um, in this this hadith, uh, the reason why the Prophet uh, وسلم, he mentioned this is we find in a hadith that came in the Sahih of an Imam Muslim that the Messenger sallallahu uh, alaihi wasallam he came into the house and he was brought some bread. He was brought some bread and he said. Is there any idam? Is there anything for me to eat along with the bread? And they said, uh, no, only some khal, only some vinegar. And so the Prophet wasallam, he said, vinegar is a great thing to eat along with the bread. Uh, some of the ulama have said that the reason why the Prophet wasallam, mentioned this about the vinegar while uh, some things may be a little bit tastier than vinegar. Does vinegar, anybody eat vinegar here? Just dip the bread in the vinegar? Uh, Abu Amir, you do that? Oh, we add it to the salad. Some, I mean, just you ever take the, the vinegar and just dip the bread in it? No. So it's, 
it's not something that normally we you know a lot of people do that because it's not the most um, the vinegar is not the tastiest thing that we could use. And so some of the ulama, like Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah, they mentioned that the reason why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this about the vinegar was in order to uh, help, uh, you know, help the, his family in being patient with only having vinegar. Is, 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 he was say, is saying that about the vinegar to let them know that vinegar is it's something that is good for you that you can have to eat with your bread and that way they will remain thankful, uh, appreciative uh, for the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed uh, them with. Uh, and so a person, if he was to look in his house and have his bread and he, the only thing he could find in his house uh, is vinegar, then he should be happy because vinegar is something, because if you dip the bread in, even if the bread is old, uh, and is a little, maybe a little hard. If you dip the bread in the vinegar, it'll, it'll soften. It'll soften the bread up for you, uh, and it'll be <clears throat> make it something that you can eat. Um, and so, this is a blessing from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that we should not uh, overlook. And I think in our last class we talked about the conditions of the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam and how uh, he didn't have much to eat uh, all the time. And this is another example of how little. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to have uh, to the point where they brought some bread. He said, well, is there something to eat along with the bread? Because uh, who, you know, people don't eat just, just bread. It's very rare that you'll just have a piece of bread and you eat the bread. If you have bread, you want to eat something along with it. So he said, Alayhi Salatu is there something that can go along with this? Uh, like maybe I can dip my bread in. And they said, no, just some vinegar. No, just some vinegar. And to show that the vinegar is not the first choice. To show that the vinegar is not the first choice. Because <clears throat> if it was the first choice, when the Prophet ﷺ said, do we have something to go along with the bread? They would have said, yes, we have some vinegar. But they said, no, we only have vinegar. Uh, it showed the, how little the Prophet ﷺ used to have. So the next hadith uh, Al-Imam Al-Tirmidhi Rahimahullah He says We were told by Qutayba He's Qutayba bin Sa'id Who said We were told by Abu Al-Ahwas On the authority of Simak ibn Harb Who said I heard a numan ibn Bashir <coughs> Radiallahu ta'an Who say Alastum fi ta'amin wa sharabin ma shi'tum Laqad ra'aytu nabiyakum Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Wa ma yajidu min ad-daqal Ma yamla'u batnahu uh, An-Nu'man ibn Bashir radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa an abihi as he was a sahabi and his father was a sahabi Bashir ibn Sa'ad radiallahu ta'ala anhu he is the one who uh, Bashir, the father of An-Nu'man he is the one who gifted to his son An-Nu'man a slave and he wanted the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be a witness to this gift and so <coughs> He went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, O Messenger of Allah, I want you to bear witness that I have given my son the slave. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked him, do you have children other than him? And he said, yes. He said, did you give to them a slave as well? And uh, Bashir said, no. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, لا أشهد على جور. I do not bear witness to oppression. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهُ وَعَدِلُوا بَيْنَ أَوْلَادِكُمْ And fear Allah and be fair and just between your children. So this is Bashir ibn Sa'ad, the father of An-Nu'man ibn Bashir. رضي الله تعالى عنهما. So in this hadith is... The hadith of An-Nu'man ibn Bashir radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa an abihi who said Alastum fi ta'amin wa sharabin Do you not have food and drink ma shi'tum? Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullah Don't you have food and drink whatever you wish? I mean you eat what you want, you drink what you want, you have everything that you would like. Laqad ra'aytu nabiyyakum sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
وَمَا يَجِدُوا مِنَ الدَّقَلْ مَا يَمْلَأُ بَطْنَهُ He said, indeed, I saw your Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he would not be able to find a daqal or min ad daqal a daqal is the, the, the dates that are kind of uh, they're, not, uh, they're not the ones that you would want to eat I mean they're edible but you know how you have a tin, uh, a tin bucket of dates and you eat, you eat the ones that you like there's ones that you don't really uh, you don't really want those so you push them to the side to the side until you get down to there's no dates left except these ones right here. And so these are referred to as like the, not bad dates, but they're not the dates that are uh, preferred. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're like your second choice. They're like your second choice. And so Nu'man ibn, Nu'man ibn Bashir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, don't you have the food and drink of your choice? Indeed, I saw your Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he wasn't able to find of these second hand or second choice dates what would fill his belly. Meaning he wouldn't be able to even find from these dates what he can get full off of. Meaning these dates which are not expensive. These, you might even be able to find people who just give them to you because they, they really don't want them. So they'll, you, actually they'll be happy if you come and, and, and take them off of your hands. So, uh, you know, there are people who have food that they, it's kind of like a second choice. They don't really want it. And it just sits around and sits around. They don't want to throw it away. Right? So when someone comes and says, hey, can I have those? They say, yes, please take them. And they get happy. Here, I'll give you some more. Take these as well. Um, but the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was not able to have of this type of date what he can even get full off of. And so Nu'man ibn Bashir radiallahu ta'ala anhu was, re- was reminding uh, the people that they should be grateful for that which they have because they can pick and choose the foods that they eat. And we had this discussion uh, in our last class uh, <coughs> about you know, how we're able to eat and drink of our choice. I mean, alhamdulillah, uh, we have to drink, we have water, not only do we have water, we have spring water, we have energy water, we have alkaline water, coconut water, you know, all different types of water. And then from the juice, we have orange juice, apple juice, grape juice, cranberry juice, uh, uh, what do you call it, the, the, uh, the, the, um, the grapefruit juice. Uh, we have all of these different things to drink. And then some of us, we have, you know, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Sprite. Uh, and so we, and we open up our refrigerator and we sit with the refrigerator open for five minutes just trying to decide what do I want to drink? What would I like to drink? Uh, from, and then we want, for lunch, we come and we have, uh, we have turkey meat, we have chicken meat, we have beef meat, uh, we have, you know, American cheese, yellow cheese, white cheese, Swiss cheese, all kinds of cheeses that we just sit there and we try to figure out what kind of sandwich do I want to make. We have peanut butter and jelly, tuna fish. And we sit there for 15, 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, just deciding the combination of foods that we're going to have for lunch. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he wasn't able to find food in his house that he was able to even get full off of. Now again, as we said previously, we're not saying that we want you to go home and throw your food away. We're just saying that we want you to be appreciative to that blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. Also, we also mentioned previously that the dunya or having the dunya, having wealth and food and clothes, and cars, is not a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. It is not a sign in of itself that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored you. Because if this was a sign, you know, food and money and, and just wealth, if this was a sign in of itself that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored you and is pleased with you and He loves you, 
then the Prophet ﷺ would have been the first one to have had all of these different things. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. The next hadith, <coughs> uh, Imam al-Tirmidhi rahimahullah, he says, we were informed, we, we were told by Abda ibn Abdullah al-Khuzai, who said that we were told by Muawiyah ibn Hisham, on the authority of Sufyan, on the authority of Muharib ibn Dinar, on the authority of Jabir ibn Abdullah, who said that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ni'm al-idam al-khal. Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that vinegar is a wonderful or is a great uh, idam. And this is the same uh, as the hadith that preceded. So the next hadith, uh, At-Tirmidhi rahimahullah, he says, We were told by Hanad, who said that we were told by Waqi' on the authority of Sufyan, on the authority of Ayyub, on the authority of Abi Qalaba, on the authority of Zahdam al-Jarmi, uh, who said, Kunna inda Abi Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu ta'ala anhu, fa'utiya bi lahmi dajaj, فَتَنَحَّى رَجُلٌ مِنَ الْقَوْمِ فَقَالَ مَا لَكَ فَقَالَ إِنِّي رَأَيْتُهَا تَأْكُلُ شَيْئًا فَحَلَفْتُ أَنْ لَا أَكُلَهَا قَالَ أُدْنُوا فَإِنِّي رَأَيْتُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ يَأْكُلُ لَحْمَ الدجاج. So, uh, Zahdam al-Jarmi, he said, We were with Abi Musa al-Ash'ari, رضي الله تعالى عنه, and he was brought some chicken meat. He was brought some chicken meat, and a person amongst the group left, or he stepped away, فتنحى, which means like if they were all gathered around ready to eat, then he would have backed up in a way that says he's not eating, okay? And so uh, Abu Musa, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, ma laka, like what's wrong with you? Like why aren't, why aren't you eating? <coughs> why aren't you going to eat? So the man said, I saw chickens, I saw a chicken eating something. Meaning it was eating something that he didn't really like. He didn't think that this was something that was appropriate for the chicken to be eating and then turn around and he's going to eat the chicken. Uh, and it's possible because uh, sometimes chicken, when they don't find food to eat, then they'll eat their own, uh, they eat their own feces. Chickens, if they don't have or if they can't find food for themselves to eat, then they will eat their own feces. And this is possible that this is what he saw and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. So he said, I saw it eat something and I swore that I was, not, I was never going to eat chicken. He saw a chicken eating something and he said, I swore that I was never going to eat chicken. So Abu Musa radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, come over here for verily I saw the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam eating chicken meat. And so <coughs> this shows us the permissibility of eating chicken. Now, there is a prohibition that we find in the Sunan of At-Tirmidhi, also in the Sunan of uh, Abi Dawood with an authentic chain that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam naha an akli jalala wa albaniha. The Prophet ﷺ prohibited eating the jalala and drinking its milk. Now the jalala, they're the animals that eat filth. They're the animals that eat filth. And so the Prophet ﷺ prohibited us from eating those animals and drinking their milk. And so if you have any animal, chicken, goat, uh, sheep or cow or uh, uh, the, the camels, if their survival is off of filth, like sometimes here in America, I don't know about farmers uh, overseas, uh, they have some animals that they, that they feed, uh, the, 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 not just scraps, like leftovers, but filth. They'll feed them garbage and the, and the animals will eat it. Um, I've actually seen Goats eating cardboard. I've seen goats eating cardboard. Um, one time, uh, I don't want to mention where I was. I don't want anybody to get angry with me. But I was in a certain place. And I have a video of this. As it was amazing to me. 
Not amazing in a way like, oh wow, it was amazing. Like, how would somebody do this? Um, the garbage was dumped in the middle of the street. That was where the, the garbage people pick up the garbage from. So the people that live in the area, they walk out to the, uh, you know how they're in, in, we have a medium. They have one side of the street, the car's going one way. Another side of the street, cars go another way. And then there's like a sidewalk in the middle for people to walk. All right, that place, uh, people just go out, they bring their garbage cans, and they dump the garbage out right there in the middle of the street. Right? So this, and then the garbage people will come along, I don't know, once a week or once or whatever, and they will pick up the garbage from there. Not, not in a can, it's just on the ground. Now, there were people who, were, who, had, who owned goats. They would bring their goats out to these places and feed their goats of this food. Or, uh, now I don't even call it food, it's, it's garbage. It's garbage. And it's intended to be picked up and taken away to a waste, uh, whatever they do with the waste uh, of, of that place. The people come and they bring their animals to eat from that. The Prophet Wasallam has prohibited us from eating the Jalala. And that is any animal that eats filth. Any animal that eats filth, we're prohibited from eating its meat, and we're prohibited from drinking its milk. Uh, is that considered filth? Well, yes. Garbage? It's garbage. It sitting out. It has bacteria. It'll make you sick. Yeah, the, the, the pig. The pig is also an animal that they, actually in America, that's what they feed the pig. They feed the pig garbage. I think Well, that's also as part of it as well. But even that was that this will be included, because the 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 those the, the things that are in there become rotten, and they grow maggots. They grow maggots. Um, if you leave rice sitting out, actually, they had this happen to me uh, once, where uh, I had a bag. I had some. I had a, I had a garbage bag. Right when I was leaving uh, Medina after I graduated, I had sent my wife and my children home and I had stayed back for about, a, I think maybe I remember if it was two weeks and I was finishing up cleaning up the apartment <coughs> that we were living in to turn it over back to the owner. And as I was cleaning, we had some rice. I didn't know what to do with it. Uh, and I was leaving. I had a plane to catch. So I, I just, you know, I dumped it in a bag. And so the bag was sitting on top of the counter and I don't remember how it, the bag ripped open and it sat there. It sat there because I was busy, I had things to do, going back and forth to university, trying to take care of everything. And the bag sat there for several days. And then one day I went back, I said, let me go back in the kitchen uh, to make sure everything is clean. And I see the bag on the counter and maggots are growing out of that. In Ramadan, our garbage can here at the masjid, it, it overflows. And the, the, the maggots crawl, they become so much that they crawl here and they're in the masjid. And that's how we get the flies all over the place. Uh, yes, and I'm saying that these, when, when you have an animal, if you have an animal, that this is its primary food, that this is what it sustains itself with, then this is, we've been prohibited from eating this. Because it affects the meat. It affects the meat. Uh, 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 because when, when an animal sustains itself on something that is filthy, then it affects the meat and it, in, it can in turn cause harm to us. It can in turn cause harm uh, to us. You know, uh, if you see the animals that eat from, from the garbage, huh? you see they're dirty. Yes. It's not like the regular animal. Right, they're, 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 they look, and, they look uh, skinny and, and, they and they look sick. They look sick. Uh, now, I'm not saying that the, the jalala, it's important to understand that what we're talking about now, the chickens sometimes will turn around and eat their feces. The goats will eat something that is rotten from time to time. That doesn't automatically make it a prohibition. We're talking about the jalala is that animal that it sustains itself off of this type. This is how it survives. We understand? And so if you see a chicken, which is why... Uh, which is why the, uh, the Tabi'i, uh, Zahdam, he said he saw it eat something. And when he saw that, he said, he said I'll eat, Wallahi, I'm never going to eat chicken again. Wallahi, I'm never going to eat chicken again. He saw it 
turn around. I believe, and Allah knows best, I believe he saw it turn around and eat its own feces, and he's, which made him swear he's never going to eat chicken again. And when he explained that to Abu Musa, Abu Musa said that, come on and eat, because the, I saw the Prophet wasallam eating chicken, which means that that chicken was not primarily fed and sustained by filth. But what is prohibited as it relates to the Jalala is the animals that they're sustained. And you look, their primary source of living and their primary source of eating is filth. Uh, you know, bacteria fed, you know, bacteria filled uh, garbage, their feces. If this is what they're surviving off of, it's been prohibited for us to eat that. Now, Abdullah ibn Umar, <coughs> Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhum was reported that uh, when he found the jalala, the chicken, that he found like this, then he would hold it. He would make it mahboos. He would, um, how do you say the mahboos in English? He would, um, uh, huh? He, he would keep it locked up. He would keep it caged up, or, keep it, or he would tie it up to something, and then he would feed it good food for three days. He would keep it tied up, and then only allow it to eat that which is good for three days, uh, and then he would slaughter it and eat it. And so, so for the ulama, some of the ulama have said that the chicken that we find that is like this, the way we purify its, uh, its meat is by, excuse me, is by holding it and only allowing it, making sure that he is only allowed uh, to eat from that which is good and pure uh, for a period of three days, and then that should be sufficient uh, for it to be purified. Others uh, like cows and, and goats and sheep, they've said seven days. Uh, there's no, there is no uh, period that is mashroor, meaning there's nothing in uh, the sunnah that specifies a particular amount of time. But, <clears throat> as I said, Ibn Umar used to do this with the chicken for three days. Uh, and some of the other, uh, of the salaf with the sheep and the goat, they used to do seven days. And so whatever it is, that the time that it would take, to purify and to get that filth out of the system of, uh, of the animal and by feeding it uh, that which is good, then it will be permissible to slaughter and eat because it's no longer uh, under the category of the jalala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. This also shows us what we were talking about uh, a couple of days ago, the importance of eating or knowing what we're eating and eating good food. Um, <coughs> Is the kuffar? They will feed animals with whatever, whatever in order, in whatever it is that's cheap, so they can keep their animals alive, slaughter them, and sell them uh, to the people, and allow the people to eat that. Uh, we should be paying attention to uh, where our meat comes from and what we're eating, making sure not just that it's slaughtered properly, but the animal itself that's being slaughtered has to be an animal that's appropriate to be eaten. Has to be an animal that's appropriate uh, to be eaten. And there are other ahadith that talk about uh, the, the preservation of the meat of the animal. Like, for example, <coughs> uh, the hadith of the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, that prohibits us from slaughtering in front of other animals. When we slaughter, it's not permissible to do that in front of the other animals that we're going to slaughter. So let's say we have, we're going to slaughter, let's say we're going to have a meal, we're inviting the whole, you know, the whole community, so we slaughter four sheep. We purchase four sheep, and we're going to slaughter four sheep. We slaughter them individually. We, we don't slaughter one in front of the group, because, and the ulama have said that the reason why that is, is because if the other animals see that, then they become fearful. We don't even show the animal the knife. When we're going to slaughter, we don't show him the knife because the animal becomes anxious and he tenses up, he becomes scared. And if he's slaughtered and that tenseness is in the meat, then it can cause harm to us when we eat it. I don't know, that. I think that there's some type of chemical that gets secreted because of fear. It gets secreted in the body. Something, some chemical reactions happen. Even us as humans... When we become afraid, there's something that there are some chemical reactions that happen within us, and that goes into the meat, uh, goes into our, our, our muscles, and the same thing happens to uh, the animals. They get afraid, 
they tense up and it affects the meat. It has an effect on the meat and then in turn it can have an effect on us. And so there's, there's a hadith uh, from this. There's sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, in reference to what we're eating and how we're eating. How is the animal raised and how is it being provided for? How has it been slaughtered? And then how has it been prepared? All of that has to be taken into consideration as it relates to the things that we eat. We can't just say, oh, this is chicken, we eat it because it's halal. Oh, this is a cow, this is beef, we eat it, it's, it's, no, it's halal. Some, it, may be, it may be permissible to eat it, but it also could be harmful uh, to our bodies. Uh, and so these are things that we have to really pay attention to. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Uh, the next hadith Al-Imam uh, <coughs> uh, Al-Tirmidhi rahimahullah, He says we were told by Al-Fadl ibn Sahil Al-A'raj Al-Baghdadi Who said that we were told by Ibrahim Ibn Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi On the authority of Ibrahim ibn Umar ibn Safina Ibn Safina On the authority of his father On the authority of his grandfather Who said Akaltu ma'a Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Lahma hubara the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said that uh, oh, the grandfather of Umar ibn Safina said I ate along with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam um, the, the, the meat of Hubara which is a bustard honestly I, before this hadith I never even knew what a bustard was um it's a, it's a type of bird. Y'all know what a bustard is? You, you have hubara in, in Morocco? I don't know. It's, it's, well, it's, it's kind of a, it looks like a, I don't even know how to describe it. If somebody can, you can look it up. It's called a bustard. B-U-S-T-A-R-D. That's in English. Um, it's, it's found in places like in desert type of, in hot climates, like in, in the desert, like in the Middle East. Northern Africa and parts of Asia. Um, Shufu? Bustard. Not B U S T A R D. Bustard. You found it. Yeah. You see what 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 kind of what what does it what what does that resemble to you? Like a big pigeon. Describe it. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, this is it. Let me see. Yeah, this is it. But, like a turkey? Yeah, yeah, but it's like a little turkey. Like, I don't know, but is that? Yeah, that's, that's it. That's a, that's, a, that's a bustard. What, what does that look like to you? Huh? It's not hajar. No. No, it's, it's, small. it's too small to look. It's not, uh, turkey is much bigger. What does that look like? Yeah, well, if whoever wants to know the, what it is, is look up Bustard and on, on Google Bustard, and it'll show you a picture. B-U-S-T-A-R-D, Bustard. That's the Hubara. Uh, however, this hadith is da'if. This hadith is uh, not authentic uh, <coughs> because of Al-Fadl ibn Sahl al-A'raj. Uh, his narrations are, uh, they're not strong. Um, however, the bustard is permissible to eat. Just because this hadith is not authentic, uh, the bustard is permissible to eat uh, because it is, there's no uh, underneath of the general uh, generality of permissibility of eating animals like this and there's no prohibition uh, against eating uh, the bustard. But the hadith is not uh, authentic. Uh, the next hadith Al-Imam Al-Tirmidhi Rahimullah He says we were told by Ali ibn Hujur Who said that we were told by Ismail ibn Ibrahim On the authority of Ayyub On the authority of Al-Qasim Al-Tamimi On the authority of Zadham, <coughs> Zahdam Al-Jarmi Who said that we were with Abi Musa Al-Ash'ari uh, And some food was brought to him uh, And in the food was some chicken meat And in the per, in the pe- amongst the people was a man from Bani Taymullah Ahmar so it was a man who was described as being red. Uh, he, was, he was described as being red. 
It's possible that he was red, he was described as being red because of his white skin. And when people have white skin, their, 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 their skin turns red, uh, you know, like during times of emotions and you can see redness in them. Or <clears throat> it's possible they described as being red uh, because of uh, like red being red boned and the shade of the tanness of the skin was uh, reddish. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But he was from the tribe of Beni Taymillah, uh, and, and he said, and he didn't come close, so Abu Musa al-Ash'ari said to him, come close, uh, he said, indeed, I saw the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, eating uh, from this type of food, and he said, indeed, I saw it eat something uh, that was filthy, and I swore that I would never eat it, and this is similar to the hadith uh, that has been uh, preceded. The next hadith uh, Imam al-Tirmidhi rahimahullah, he says, we were told by Mahmoud ibn Ghaylan, who said that we were told by Abu Ahmed al-Zubayri and Abu Nu'aym. They both said that we were told by Sufyan on the authority of Abdullah ibn Isa, on the authority of a man from the people of Sham. He's called Ata' on the authority of Abi Asid, uh, who said the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Excuse me. <coughs> he said, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Kulu az-zayt wa dahinu bihi fa'nuhu min shajaratin mubarakah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, eat olives uh, or the, um, the, uh, the, the oil, the oil of the, of, of the olives, uh, yeah, the olive oil, wa dahinu bihi, mean oil yourself, moisturize uh, yourself with it, fa'nuhu min shajaratin mubarakah. Verily it is from a blessed uh, tree. This hadith, uh, in it is the man, his name was Ata, and his uh, narrations are unacceptable, uh, so this hadith is not authentic. However, uh, there is an ayat of the Quran that mentions that the, that the, the, the Zaytun is blessed. There's an ayat of the Quran that does mention that the Zaytun, that the olive, uh, it, is, it comes from a blessed tree. So that part of the hadith is authentic because of the verse of the Qur'an. As it relates to the command of the Messenger, والسلام, to eat it and to oil ourselves with it and to moisture ourselves with it, uh, then this is uh, not authentic. And the next hadith also uh, is from the narration of Umar ibn Khattab. That the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Kulu zait wa dahinu bihi fa innu min shajaratin mubaraka." This also is uh, not authentic because uh, there is a disconnect uh, in the chain. <coughs> and the next hadith, and, uh, and the next hadith, which is also another uh, another narration, uh, which is the same hadith but with a different chain on the authority of Zaid ibn Aslam, who reports this on the authority of Aslam. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that to eat uh, the olives and oil and moisturize yourself with it for verily it is from a blessed tree. And this hadith is snad uh, is also uh, not authentic. Uh, again, uh, the olive does come from a blessed tree because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, he said this. Um, but as far as the command to eat it and to oil yourselves with it, because if there's a commitment, not that it's permissible to eat olives and to eat olive oil, it's permissible to do that. However, if the, the difference between this hadith being authentic and not being authentic is that there's a command from the Prophet والسلام, to eat the olive or to eat the oil and to oil yourself and moisturize yourself with it. If the hadith is authentic, then we would say that it is recommended there's a command from the Prophet ﷺ to do so. We would tell everybody to go out to the olive farms and get your olives and, and, and squeeze out the, the oils and to moisturize your beard, your faces, your hair, your hands, your body with it because this would be the command of the Messenger ﷺ. So there are those who, who, who say, who believe that these ahadith the, with these different chains they strengthen themselves to a level of being hasan, which means good, uh, which would mean it is uh, uh, correct or authentic. However, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. It seems as though 
uh, in each of these chains because of the, the level of the weakness uh, that they may not necessarily strengthen themselves. Uh, but those who say, those, who, those of the ulama who recommend this practice, then this is the reason why, because they see these are hadith, that one will testify for the other. And then there's those from the ulama who say that they know that these ahadith are remain weak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Um, our last hadith of the evening, we'll mention this. Uh, we'll mention, well, we'll leave this because there's, there's still a lot more ahadith under the chapter. So we'll, we'll, we'll stop on this uh, hadith number 159 and we'll, we'll, cut, we'll pick back up with hadith number 160 uh, next week, inshallah. Does anybody have... Uh, any questions about that which has been uh, mentioned so far? Tawadha. Yeah, uh, oil from the Arab. Mm -hmm. Is that comparable to oil that, price, oil that we buy on the shelf? Uh, you'd have to ask. The brothers from Morocco are big time olive oil eaters. Like because do they make that? Is, is there something added to it? Or whatever? I honestly, I honestly, when I go to the store, I told I'm I'm from the city. So uh, when I go to the store and I see the olive oil, one is like really dark and then one looks like it's a whole different color of green and one says virgin and the other one says it's also virgin. Uh, I don't even know what that even, yeah, I don't even know what that means, honestly. I don't, under, I don't know. So maybe the brothers can explain. Huh? Yeah, but what does it mean when it says virgin olive oil? When it, what does the word virgin mean? Huh? Take the extra virgin. Okay, well, what's the, what's the extra virgin? What does that mean? The first, the first uh, not mix it. They don't mix it with what? So it's extra, it's extra, like it's virgin olive oil. Like just with it, like the virgin, not been touched. It's not just pure. Like your virgin woman. Yeah, that's first. Hey. First, extra virgin, the first. So the, it's the first one to come out. So what's the difference between the extra virgin and the virgin? The ex extra virgin, the first one, the, what do you call it? Because all the, the pure come in in the first. Uh-huh. The, the and then the virgin is just, it just hasn't been mixed. That's what that means. We don't know what they do. Ah. Uh, <laughs> the only thing we, 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 we try it. <laughs> Maybe someone can, can benefit us. Maybe someone can benefit us by, uh, by, doing, by doing the research on the different companies and what that term, what do they, what do, they do? Abu Tariq, do you, do you, do you? Hey, what? The first time they press it. The first time they press it. Virgin means that uh -huh. So there's still more oil in it. Uh -huh. so they press it again. So the very first set is extra virgin. The second time. So they press they press the olive, and the oil that comes out that's that's extra virgin. So if they press the olive again a second time, then that or any time after that, then that's that's the virgin. And what's and what is the benefit or what is the difference between the two as it relates to cooking or eating or the 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 extra virgin tastes better, yeah. uh, and it's more healthy. Mm. They got different, and some of them some of them have different uses. When you look like some say this is for marinating or, or salads, and this is for cooking. I, I don't I don't think that in 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 general as a general rule, uh, anything that if we look on the ingredients and it's been mixed with anything. Uh, I don't. I don't know that that that's not what we're looking for. If we're going to if we're going to eat the olive oil, then we should look in the ingredients to make sure that uh, first, where is it coming from? Uh, the certain places are which are known for their olive gardens or their olive you know farms more than other places. Um, like in 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 a sham, a sham is well known. Yeah, a sham is well known for their olives. Huh? All the Mediterranean. All of them? Yes. Uh. Since Spain and all around, or back to Morocco. There's one brother that this side is pure. SubhanAllah. The virgin olive oil is 99.99% pure. So, where does that other percentage? 
What is it? What is that? That's my. That was my question. Uh, that to say is that in the jar? Is that ours? I, I mean, I believe. I believe that. I believe that that's if you. It cheats, you know. And and I mean. they cheat. They mix it with canola oil, whatever you can. Ah, they do that. Allah yeah. mustan. Yeah. You guys can tell? Huh? You can tell this. when they mix it. The taste, the taste, and uh, you can't eat too much on the, with the one is mixed. It, it will, it will mm. hurt you. Which brand do you buy? <laughs> you know which brand. Huh? Which, what brand do you buy? If I, I can't buy the Moroccan one, I like it. What's the name of it? Uh, have, uh, Fasia. 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 You can buy that here? Yeah, they have to go to the, to the Arabic store. They have. Ah. Uh, well, then, what, which one do you buy, Abu Tariq? I buy Zaytun from Restaurant Ah. Uh, I buy the. Uh, the uh, what is it? Bertaroli. I don't even know how to pronounce it. Yeah, Rostrum people, they have one called Lira. It's not bad. Lira. Lira, Lira. 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 The one that's the store that's connected to Al Quds? Yeah. Uh, because they have a, they have a, the, 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 uh, Subhanallah. Actually, it says actually, Virgin Olive has has a superior taste. Mm. So we we have what we have is you know anytime we bring up food. And start discussing. We always we have the munakasha, uh, where we get our food. Um, alhamdulillah, uh, I believe the brothers from overseas. One of the things that I noticed when I was in you know the different countries uh, in, in in Saudi Arabia and in, in Egypt. Uh, alhamdulillah, the brothers their, their method of eating is very very uh, different than how it is in America. The food there uh, is, is 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 it even has a different taste. Um, when I first got to Medina and I went to the store to buy chicken, uh, I was wondering, you know, where are the chickens? This looks like, it says chicken, but then I'm looking, and this looks like a Cornish hen. Uh, it's, it was like really tiny. You know, I'm used to like chicken. And so these things were tiny. And then and I realized that in America, uh, my whole life I never realized that they're pumping up these animals with steroids to make them bigger. Right, they, they're pumping them up to make them bigger, uh, but really chickens don't get that big. You know, if you leave, if you leave the chickens be, then they're not really that big. Um, and so, the food it tastes different, and you know it even leaves you feeling different. Uh, if if that if that makes any sense, I'm sure that when you go back home, you can you can taste the difference in even in the fish. And, yes. And so you're right, right, because even in Medina in the souk, like right, you, 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 when you're walking down the street, they have all the chickens in the cages, yeah. and, and they say, you know, you want some chicken? You say, yeah, I want, you know, give me, give me that one right there on the top. No, 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 not that, that one, the other one. And then you slaughter it for you right in front of you, you know, skin it and cut it up right there, and you take a, a fresh, you know, that's fresh. Uh, but here in America, you know, we have a different way uh, of doing meat, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah azza wa jalla help us. Uh, uh, Yes, Sammy. You said like um, the Prophet is like haram the red one. I read an article about a, I read an article about it, and it said that most foods and like most foods that they feed animals in America are like foods that are older or have type of diseases in them that they feed animals. Um, that there's there's it's going to be very difficult to to because America is so big. That it's going to be difficult to pass a blanket statement about the food that they, what they do in America, um, you know, what they feed their animals. Because not all animals, even even in Florida, if you go from one store to the next, not all the food comes from the same farm. Not all, not all, not every animal came from the same farm, and so it's going to be very difficult to 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 pass judgment or make a blanket statement. Uh, because different farms may have different practices and policies. Uh, it's always better, it's always better to choose uh, to look and read your ingredients and to see, because uh, some meats, it's written on the packages that this was grass-fed, 
uh, this was fed only organic. Um, our brother, Jazakallah uh, Khaira, Mustafa's brother, what, what, I keep forgetting his name, and owns a farm in St. Cloud. Ibrahim. Uh, I had a discussion with Ibrahim uh, uh, maybe a year ago or two years ago about his animals and what he feeds them. And he actually showed me uh, the food that he feeds the animals. And he showed me that the ingredients, we went through the ingredients. I don't remember all the details right now. However, the ingredients were all natural. So the food that he was feeding his animals uh, were, were like all na- had all natural uh, ingredients. And so alhamdulillah, the animals there, I would, you know, if you're going to go, and I'm not, uh, this is not diaya, this is not, uh, uh, not a commercial. Uh, however, I'm just saying that this is, alhamdulillah, <laughs> if, if, we're going, if, if, you wanted to, if you wanted to be certain about your meat and, you know, where it came from, you can go to the brother's farm and you know what he's feeding his animals, how he's raising them. You can see their living conditions. Uh, you can go out there, you can slaughter it with your own hands. And, and skin it, and then you'll know exactly where uh, you got your meat from. However, going to the store, even going to some of the Muslim stores, um, it's, it's kind of, uh, at times it may be, you know, question mark as it relates to uh, where did the animals come from. Uh, and I'm not saying that any of this is haram. Uh, however, if a person wanted to make sure and he wanted to, you know, uh, be diligent about his family, then he would slaughter uh, with his own hands, and this is the best way to go about it. Uh, I wish that we could, you know, develop a system, and for our masjid, where we, you know, if we want beef, then we, as a community, we can slaughter a cow and have it cut up and divided and packaged for us. Uh, I'll take the steaks. You know, you can, you guys can have the ribs, uh, and you know, and and, and it'll be cheaper for us in the long run. You know, we can buy big, uh, big freezers for our homes, and then we can stack the meat up slaughter sheep and have it cut up and packaged uh, for us. It'd be, it'd be easier this way if we could do this versus... Huh? Oh, that nobody's, nobody's ever invited me. That's... that's. Uh, uh, well, Tariq, is this... Is this you, you, you have this system? Oh, I guess I'm, I'm the only one who has been left out. Uh, Shuaib, you you do this as well? Okay, alhamdulillah. I don't, I don't feel, I don't feel alone now. But this is something I think that we should do for our community. Um, you know, it's it's healthier, healthier. Number one, and it's cheaper. It ends up being cheaper in the long run. It ends up being cheaper in the long run. Uh, slaughtering, uh, going to the farms where we know the people who own the farms, and and we see the conditions of the animals, and we see how they're taken care of. We can see that with our own eyes. We can see what they're eating with our own eyes, and then we see how they're slaughtered with our own eyes. Uh, and then we take that home and feed our families with that. That would be the best way, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Khair, um, inshallah. Uh, we'll stop here, inshallah. We'll pick up uh, next week. Hada wallahu ta'ala a'lam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Muhammad.